Hey, this is Ben Licata. Welcome to the show. We have an amazing Skype extravaganza for you this evening. This is possibly one of the biggest shows we've ever done. Uh, we'll be talking with Jeff Gogway, uh, Guy Aitchison, Michelle Wartman, Damon Conklin, Stephen Peace, Alex and Allison Gray, James Kern, uh, and Chet Tsar. This is definitely one of the most all-star lineups we've ever had. Um, first, we'll be talking to Michelle Wartman. Michelle, can you hear us? Hey. Hi. Yes, loud Great. and clear. Great, nice to see you. Nice to see you. So this, was, this whole show was kind of uh, inspired by you. This is, uh, you motivated us to get this done. Do um, you want to tell us a little bit about your experiences with the, uh, the artist retreat and uh, you know, painting and art in general? Sure, I'd be awesome. happy to. Well, I suppose, I suppose it all um, happened when Gabe finally got us to do his show, which was the tattoo gathering uh, in uh, Massachusetts. And um, we realized what an amazing uh, thing that he was putting on and, and just how, how it was such a nice atmosphere. It was really great to hang out with all of our artist friends. Um, and then uh, we were excited to do it the next year, and they said they weren't going to be doing it the next year, that they were going to take a year off. And I was thinking, well, the best thing about this whole experience is hanging out with all the artists. Like, uh, we all tattoo uh, pretty regularly in our own environment, but just a chance to hang out with other artists and be inspired and motivate ourselves to do art and almost maybe even have some kind of retreat away from uh, the hecticness of our lives that often keeps us from being able to allow ourselves for time to do art was a really enticing idea. So I was kind of mentioning that to Guy and, or maybe even Gabe, and they're like, well, you're going to have to talk to the wife over there, Gabe's wife, to, uh, you know, see if she liked the idea because, um, you know, she was really hoping that Gabe would spend a little more time at home and not be putting on all these crazy events. So uh, we mentioned it to her and she was thrilled because it seemed like something that was more doable. It was less, uh, you didn't need pipe and drape, you didn't need to, uh, you have the health, health inspectors out to check people's setups. It was just seemed like a maybe a simpler plan for an, another option to just keep uh, to keep the space open for a year. So rather than waiting for the second year for the next Paradise uh, Tattoo Retreat, uh, we maybe thought it would be nice to turn it into an artist retreat with, and take the space of the year in between. So uh, we all talked about it, and everyone liked the idea, and that's sort of how it came to be. And it's and it's an amazing event. It's uh, there's there's really nothing like it going on right now. What, what drew you to, to painting originally? What, how did you get to that point? Well, uh, when I was younger, I was always an artist and just interested in art. And then I went to the Art Institute in Chicago and started painting there. I learned uh, figure painting and just painting in general. I took a general painting class. And I really loved uh, it as a medium and a form of communication. And then later I came into tattooing. So I've always had a background in painting and fine art. Um, what do you think the tie-in between tattoo artists and painting is? I've noticed a lot of tattoo artists really getting into painting, uh, especially lately. Uh, why do you think there's a big connection there? Well, I think in general we're artists first, and when you're a tattooist, you chances are, uh, especially if you're a developed tattooist, you have uh, artistic inclinations uh, in general, like whether you're drawing or painting or tattooing. So the more you develop yourself as an individual artistically, the more you can bring that into your tattooing and create an individual style. I think the best artists in tattooing are the ones that have that distinct style because it sets their work apart from the rest and keeps it uh, evolving and moving and shape-shifting as a, a form of many expressions, all with the, it, the uh, common thread being that it is a tattoo. Um, so throughout the show, we're going to be uh, asking people questions that come in through the chat room. And uh, okay. we've got one in that says, uh, how has becoming a parent affected uh, your artwork? That's a great question. Well, uh, I have less time. I have less time to paint and, uh, you know, my tattooing is a lot more concentrated now. So uh, I think I'm having to use, like, um, I'm having to create uh, solid chunks of time in order to get anything done. I can't just chip away at a little, a few things here and a few things there. Like, I'll, I'll schedule time to paint or I'll schedule time uh, when I have a commission to uh, to do art, but it's not as it's not as free form. It's not as uh, spontaneous. It's definitely um, something that I have to plan for. Oh, and the art that I'm doing, I think it matters more now because I have less time to to experiment with. Maybe this will work. So, uh, at least when it comes to painting, uh, with tattooing, I just have to be more efficient and try to get stuff done uh, in a more timely manner. Right. Do you think it's changed your style of, of painting at all? Um, 
giving you a different perspective being being a mom as opposed to you know it kind of because you know being a parent kind of focuses you in, in a very yeah. specific direction I, I think i feel uh more mentally assertive with uh, my intentions so with uh painting i feel like i'm on a very specific path and i want to keep pursuing uh, a subject that i'm exploring and try to say it uh, more quickly than maybe paintings in between would eventually lead to with that and with tattooing I'm trying to um, make the most out of the time that I have I can't uh, you know it's hard for people to come back because they all travel so I'm trying to be more efficient I would say that becoming a parent has made me a more efficient artist you, because of how I use my time you, you kind of I'm forced to use the, the mastering time management well, I wouldn't say I've mastered it. I wish that I, I could master it, as I still have a really hard time keeping up with everything and doing everything I want to do. But I'm trying to use it more constructively when I allot time for it, whether it's tattooing or painting. Um, another question from our chat. Um, what advice would you give someone that would be looking to... Uh, well, someone that was interested in the artist retreat, um, what do you think they could get out of it? Um, That's a great question. I, I think the... the one of the greatest things about this artist retreat is that it really is an inspiration board. I mean, no matter what your skill level is, the fact that there's so many amazing artists participating, sharing knowledge and uh, encouraging people to branch out into a second medium and understanding the benefits behind it is something that every tattoo artist would gain something from by attending, regardless of your skill level. And even if you haven't truly found your style or your voice yet, it's a chance to uh, explore that and, and to get more comfortable with uh, expressing yourself beyond uh, tattooing and uh, really grow as an artist. So I feel like even someone at an entry level would benefit from coming to this event. And uh, I know this year is it, it's, uh, it's in New Mexico uh, again and it's a beautiful resort and uh, right. really nice, nice place to take kind of a, a break from your day-to-day -day stresses and be able to paint where a lot of people don't have the opportunity to, to, uh, to, to make the time to do that. Uh, That's true. Whether you, whether you have a child or not, it's hard to make time to do your personal art. It's not what's really paying the bills unless you're lucky enough to sell your art on the side, independent of tattooing. So it's a chance. It's it's a basically you're allotting time for yourself to to work on your creativity and explore yourself as an artist. So um, in your particular, uh, the color palette that you use, you use very vibrant colors. Um, where do you draw the inspiration for the palette and the colors that you do choose? Um, well, I think they're, they're sort of, uh, I mean, I do look at flowers and I look at reference, but it's, it's sort of an internal process. When I'm looking at a reference, I'm reinterpreting it through my artist's eye. So if I look at a flower and it appears to someone else to be mostly magenta, I might see magenta, red, pink, orange, yellow. It's sort of like um, a reinterpretation of a shape based on um, an inner vision. Right. My own personal art artistic eye, I suppose you could say. Um, so. The, the chat folks want to know uh, how you would describe the style that you work in and uh, what, what moved you that way. Trying to pigeonhole yourself, I know, is, is very difficult. Yeah. Uh, well, um, I've heard someone refer to it recently as um, um, ethereal floriform, you know, uh, because it's flowers, but it's not just flowers. They're flowers that fit the body and contour to the to the lines of the body. So there's a, a lot of an or there's a lot of an organic undertone to it, but with the color palette. Uh, I've heard a lot of people refer to it as uh, pastel, pastel colors, pastel psychedelic, you know, all those things probably apply. Pastelidelic. Pastelidelic, floriform, ethereal body, body work. Yeah, I, I, I love your work. It's, it's, uh, Thank you. And it, it suits your clientele so nicely. It's, it, not, to, not to peg you, but it it's, this thing has a, uh, a feminine aesthetic to it. it yeah. And it's, it, it, I don't know, it, it comes through as a, as, as a, a more feminine style, I guess. And I, I really want women to have options with uh, what they can collect. I feel like all styles are valid. There's not one look that's the best. It's really important that people have options, especially because tattooing is permanent. So I really want you know people who do collect for me to resonate with it, and um, that's why I offer the style that it is, because that's what I like. So I like to share that. Great. Uh, so we're going to be adding uh, Steve Peace to the conversation pretty soon. Okay. Um, we might have a little bit of a overlap that might be strange, but we're going to put him in the conversation and then we can kind of freeform and we'll get this whole thing rolling. Okay. All right. Um, while we're waiting for Steve, um, are you looking forward to the retreat with the whole fam? Are you going to bring everybody out? We're really looking forward to it. something that, uh, that we think is going to be an amazing experience to, to uh, have as a family and as uh, 
to, 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 to have time to do our art too for the same reason other people are going you know it's exciting for us to make time for art like this uh, I'll be there this year trying to uh, trying to absorb some of the uh, inspiration from all you guys I'm really looking forward to it. you know there's something I'd like to add in case I don't have a chance to add this later about the retreat sure. is um, a lot of this retreat uh, there's amazing classes by um, heavy lifter artists teaching like Sean Barber Nick Baxter Jeff Gogway Alex and Allison Gray, Guy Aitchison, but in addition to all that, I'm sorry if I've forgotten our artists that I'm not including on the, the rattling there, but um, if figure drawing is going to be uh, featured prominently in, this, uh, work in these workshops every morning, actually, and then the um, late night class that Alex and Allison are, gonna, are teaching is going to also include figure drawing. I just wanted to add why I think figure drawing is so important um, for tattoo artists in particular to, uh, to experience. Is, is there room for that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, well, but I, I'm not there any longer. I don't see the screen. Is there a button I need to uh, hit? We, we still to got you. Bring me back. Um, okay. We'll, right. I'm, I'm not seeing yeah, it as long as you. We'll can try see. to refresh you, but we okay. still have you. We can hear you. So. Uh, okay. Cool. So, well, I, I like to talk about figure drawing a little sure. bit, if that's okay. Sure. Well, you know, for me as an artist, uh, first before I became a tattooist, I started with figure drawing, and I found that it was extremely um, helpful and fundamental to seeing holistically, to seeing um, the body as a whole, to seeing three-dimensional space and and how it moves. And I feel like that really applies to being a tattooist and designing the most optimal types of designs for tattooing regardless of the style. Like when you see the body, like Jeff Gogway is really good at this, so is um, Guy Aitchison. When you see how all the components connect together, there's not these stops and starts. Like the, you know, you can do those if, those, if that's what the client asks for, but what I think may, might look the best is stuff that just has a continuous flow to it, stuff that incorporates at least a little bit into the next limb, you know, this like, the sense of flow and flu fluidness. And I feel like people who draw the figure will see that and bring it back into their tattooing. I feel like it's fundamental. Yeah. I really feel like it trains the eye. Uh, it's, I mean, having an understanding of anatomy in the body it, uh, definitely makes for a better tattoo in the end. Um, uh, Marcus Leonard is great for that, too. He does, you know, he really applies his work as a whole piece that works with the body. And it's, it's definitely key. Um, that way you don't, have, you don't end up with, you know, tattoos that just look like they were stuck on. They actually flow and become a part of you. And so I can understand where figure drawing would definitely be an important okay. part. Um, so we're having a little trouble with Steve well, here. I just wanted to add that because we're going to be having figure Yeah. Uh, just bear with us just a second here. We're just, uh, we're just, we're just okay. waiting for Steve to connect in. He's having his little internet problems over there. Um, so are you going to be taking any of the seminars uh, at the retreat? Or, okay. Yeah? Uh, is there any one in particular that you're looking forward to? Yeah. Um, I'm looking forward to um, the Light Body Seminar. I don't know what the exact title is uh, of it that Alex and Allison Gray are teaching. Guy and I did that class when we in 1999 before we uh, got married, and it was really inspirational to us. Excellent. Um, I know Chet Zar is going to be doing one. I can't. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. Uh, I know Chet's, Chet's going to be doing a Chet Zara is going to be doing a seminar. I'm really looking forward to. I can't hear you guys very well. It's chopping okay. out. Okay, uh, you might just well, be having some connection problems on your end. Okay. Steve's out. Steve's calling. Hey, Steve, are you there? Yeah, All I'm right. here. Cool. We can't see you, but we can hear you. So uh, I don't know how much of this. <laughs> I can oh, see myself. There right. you are. Everybody, Steve, peace. Hey. <laughs> so Steve, I don't know how much of the conversation you caught up until this point. Uh, I know you were trying to get your stuff wired together. Uh, yeah, I, I heard everything. So you've been to uh, some of these retreats in the past, yes? Yeah, yeah, I've been to uh, one painting and two of the uh, Tattoo Paradise events. Uh, what, uh, what did you take away from the uh, the artist retreat? Well, I'm that guy that's been talking like for 10 years that I'm going to get into painting, and uh, I never have. And as soon as I went to Paradise, that was it. Uh, just the inspiration there, learning everything from the seminars, and now I paint. It's it was an overnight thing. What kind of mediums have you been working in? Are you, uh, oils, acrylics? Just in oil right now. Yeah, uh, seems like the easiest. So. <laughs> the easiest for me, it oh, is. Right yeah. on. Uh, you, you're going to be going this year. Uh, yeah, definitely. It's something now that I I refuse to miss. You know, I you know a lot of stuff going on right now. I really can't afford to go, but I can't afford not to go. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So. Um, is there any seminar that you're looking forward to going to? Oh, uh, take them all. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I asked Michelle the same question earlier um, as far as art and tattooing go. Uh, what do you think the connection is between, the, between art, uh, you know, other than tattooing and tattooing itself? Um, the tie in there. What's, is it a... I think if you want to get better, you have to paint. You know, you have to have that second medium to do stuff that you can't do in tattooing. Or, you know, experiment a little bit or, or push the limits a little bit. You know, you don't want to try something that doesn't quite work on your client because then it's on them, right? And you have to fix it. So uh, um, I think uh, Damon Conklin is one of the main people you should look at. Like his tattooing now is, I mean, his tattoo is great before. Now it's phenomenal. Ever since he started painting, it is some of the best stuff out there. And his painting is great too. I mean, I, some of the stuff he's been making lately. Is yeah, yeah, everything is. It's just, you can just see when he started painting, everything, you know, started to rise quite a bit. So that's what I'm hoping to tap into. So uh, as far as what you're up to now, what's, uh, what's new in your, uh, in your, in, in your oh, life? You don't want to oh, ask. Oh, come on. <laughs> People want to know. It's just balance. It's a fine balance, you know, trying to tattoo, uh, run a tattoo shop. We have two tattoo conventions, three kids and a wife and a couple other things. So. It's just wow. finding that balance, you know. I paint at night. I paint, you know, my kids go to bed, hang out with my wife for an hour, and then I paint if I have enough energy left from 10 till 4 in the morning. <laughs> so, Michelle, do you find that to be true, too? You got to kind of steal away in the, in the late hours trying to get some painting done? I don't know if we lost. I guess we lost Michelle. Oh, uh, bummer. It's okay. So, um... Are you bringing people with you to the retreat? Or are you going to be going alone? I'm, yeah, no, I'm bringing one of our artists from the shop, John. We have, uh, you know, you, you try and tell your artists that they should go to these things. And, uh, you know, the, people just get caught up. They get caught up in, you know, I'm too booked. I'm, if you're too booked, it means you know, you're doing pretty well. So, uh, you know, you should be able to, you know, take a weekend out and, and go and learn. But, uh, yeah, I'm bringing John Roberts, who's uh, one of our tattoo artists at the shop. Oh. And the entire shop has promised they're coming next year. Yeah, that'll be great. Um, how important do you feel it is to keep, uh, you know, your artists educated and learning more uh, to the success of your shop? Is, is it an important aspect, do you feel? Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I want the best artists at my, at my studio. Um, you know, we have drawing nights and painting nights and open houses and all that kind of stuff just to, just to try and, and make them better. Um, I don't have too much of a problem. The artists at my shop are are incredible we have the best crew we've ever had so uh there's about nine of us now so it's uh yeah it's going along that's great, great. and uh, i'm sure uh, getting them out and painting is and taking them to uh new mexico is good for morale as well oh yeah yeah, yeah definitely yeah give them a little sunshine <laughs> <laughs> yeah we don't have much of that right now <laughs> we don't either um, so i got a question question in from the uh from the chat room um it's a little off topic uh but um, what is the hardest part that you find running a tattoo shop? Running a tattoo shop is staff uh, and learning how to run your shop. I've got it down. It took me 16 years. I've got the best crew now and we know you know how to run your business as well. Um, just fine tuning everything down to where it works, to where you're paying your bills, to where you, you can take weekends off and to where you know your, your staff is really good and, and want to stay. You know, we one of our girls was offered almost double pay at another studio. She's like, no thanks. Oh well, that, that, that's a good sign that you know, you're doing something. She right. loves it at our shop. She likes the atmosphere. So, you know, that's what you got to build is an atmosphere. Keep you guys happy. Um, so, uh, you know, do you find that you need to be hands on all the time, or do your staff good enough now that you can step away every once in a while? And I'm trying to step away. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm at the shop six days a week. I take Sundays off. I usually go skiing during the winter and do other stuff during the summer. Um, yeah, six days a week. I'm trying to get that down to three, but it, it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> but you've got some good. You got After some good. Sixteen years. You just you got some good folks there that can. Uh, if you do need a day off, they can. Uh, they can run the show. Well, the shop is full now, so I no longer have a place to work. Uh, we're going to expand really quick here, so this month I actually have to work three days a week. That's all I can work. So, kind of forcing myself into the painting more. So you've got a pretty, uh, a pretty amazing worldwide kind of reputation. A lot of folks know who you are. Uh, what do you think sets you apart? Look, yeah, man. <laughs> people actually know who you are. Uh, All the people watching, you know, they're here for you. Awesome. <laughs> what do you think set you, sets your work apart from other people? Um, I just try and really get down 
you know, I, I do a free session usually. Once I'm finished a tattoo and the client is happy, I usually get them in for one more session. You know, do three or four hours on it, just tighten the hell out of the tattoo. You know, just to where it looks almost surreal, like it's just too crisp. You know, that's what I get a lot of comments on my tattoo work is that it's just too tight, you know, and, and that's what I like. You know, I've been, I got this guy who's got an Iron Maiden sleeve and I have him in every week for four hours, just tightening every little bit of the sleeve and, uh, you know, when you look at it, it makes it kind of dizzy. That's what I like. I've seen that. I've seen that sleeve. It's pretty badass. It's it's great. And I mean, an Iron Maiden should be surreal. It should be kind of, you know, Eddie. It should be perfect. Yeah. yeah. It should, I, of course, to play for proper <laughs> tribute reasons alone. Exactly. <laughs> um, so we should have some more folks coming up here. Are you going to stick around with us a little bit? You're going to watch even if we don't have you on. Yeah. Yeah. For, oh, All right. Yeah. Um. Let's go to take a little check with the folks here. Hang on, bear with me just a moment here. Cool. Uh, we're we're uh, we're waiting on Damon. <laughs> Hopefully, he'll be here shortly. Um, Jeff's giving a call in. Okay, right now. Okay, cool. I think we're going to talk with Jeff. Uh, Jeff Coguay. He's in New Orleans. He just got done running a marathon. So uh, hopefully, he won't be too tired to share some insight with us. And uh, obviously, Steve, feel free to ask him any questions you want, and he'll be asking you, and we'll just kind of do a little round robin here. <laughs> hey, Jeff, can you hear us? No, we lost him again. He's, uh, he's, been, he's been mad with the fitness lately. I mean, I don't know if you've seen photos of him recently, but uh, yeah, I he's, have, got, yeah. he's gotten quite in shape. Yeah, I, I need that. <laughs> nah. Spring is coming. It's just too cold to do anything here. Yeah. Um, so where are you at? For the folks that don't know, tell us about where you're located, where your shop is at, and all that stuff. Calgary, Alberta, Canada. So it's just a little chilly there. It's not bad. We've had a really easy winter, but it's just too many icy patches to run. So what have you got coming up in your future as far as uh, events go? Right on. You are you ready to go for those? Are you still working hard to get it all tied together? It, you you work on it right till the day of, and there's a few things you always miss, but you try as hard as you can. All right. Hey, is that guy Aitchison we see in the bottom there? Hey, guy. Hey. That's me. Look at that guy Aitchison out of the, out hey, of the Steve. booth. Hey, how are you, guy? I'm good. Uh, did I ever email you back? You did. Okay. Just checking. <laughs> I'm terrible about that stuff these days. Having a two-year-old around just scrambles your brain. Yes, I don't miss those days at all. <laughs> so, Guy, how are you? Uh, oh, well, I'm good. Our sound is breaking up, unfortunately. Um, we'll see how okay. it goes. We'll, we'll try to have... Uh, can you I hear me hear okay? just fine. Uh, Steve, Steve okay. how's your audio? Oh, That's okay, perfect. Good. good. First line's good. All right. Everything's working out good. Um, so, Guy, you want to talk a little bit about uh, some painting? Talking about painting and, uh, and the artist retreat. You're going to be there. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you're going to be doing while you're there. Oh, gosh. I don't even know where to begin. I mean, the, the, the list of events that we've got going on is, uh, is just ridiculous, you know. I mean, we've, we've got uh, stuff going pretty much from the crack of dawn until the wee hours. And... We're encouraging everybody to bring supplies so that you can just set up and in the, the three hours in between everything else to, to work on paintings and, uh, or pastels or whatever it is that you're uh, wanting to explore. But there's going to be a lot of artists that are set up and, uh, and working. Um, and it's going to be a great vibe. In the past, this has been one of my favorite parts of the event. I mean, it's great to have all these classes and um, you know panels and everything else, but it's also a beautiful thing to have these moments in between where all these artists are taking all that inspiration and directing it into uh, a project then and there. So uh, tell us a little bit about what you're going to be doing. Well, you know, I haven't decided what my painting is going to be yet. Uh, I'm going to have some kind of a painting project going on there, but, uh, uh, you know, I'm uh, teaching a workshop. It'll be on Thursday, the last day, and the class I'm teaching is... It's one of those tricky subjects, and I'm hoping I can uh, 
find a good way of, uh, of expressing this, but it's about what, how to take what's up in here and get it out onto your canvas or on skin or, or what have you. Um, and, you know, like this crazy thing that's on the screen right now, that's a combination of all kinds of clay models and, and things like that uh, in order to be able to take this thing that I'd seen in my mind's eye and actually be able to paint it, you know, more or less faithful to the original vision. Um, you know, it's, I mean, obviously every project you do, you're not going to be able to build an eight foot tall clay model. Um, that's kind of an extreme example. Uh, and I'm, I'm hoping to be able to go over some kind of, uh, you know, day to day nuts and bolts ways of, of enabling your imagination, um, and being able to expand your vocabulary so that you're not just stuck painting the same thing over and over again, but to be able to really sort of uh, take control of your own evolution. So that's my class. Um, I'm also going to be along with Sean Barber, uh, helping to lead some of the figure drawing uh, morning sessions. Uh, there's going to be a lot of figure drawing at this, uh, at this event, which, uh, you know, that's, that's kind of Michelle's influence there too. She's really all about that because it really isn't just about how well you can draw the figure. That's useful. I mean, if you tattoo, you occasionally need to be able to, you know, draw the guy slaying the dragon or whatever. But uh, to just develop the good art habits that come with uh, working for the figure. Uh, you know, you, you learn about seeing, you learn about enforcement, you learn about uh, moving quickly and flowing. Uh, you know, I'm hearing something that sounds like a wind tunnel. You know, Are you guys yeah, that too? was that was Jeff. He's in New Orleans. Oh. I don't know if, and I know Mardi Gras is over, so I'm not sure what all that noise was. So we had to kind of kill his audio. <laughs> okay. Okay, but yeah. So we've got the the figure drawing workshops, but then of course the classes that the Grays are putting on are going to involve some figure drawing as well. And this is uh, kind of inspired by a class that they uh, have been teaching for a long time uh, out in upstate New York, which is actually how. Michelle and I met them. They, we went out there for their class uh, right before we got married. It was sort of our pre-honeymoon. And uh, it was just such a, an incredible time, the, the sense of, uh, you know, kind of putting down all the things we normally know or feel that we know about art and drawing and just say, okay, we're, we're just here as students and let's take in what we can. Let's really learn from this experience. And, uh, uh, you know, came back really feeling so recharged after that. So that's that's going to be their class, and I can't tell you a lot about it in detail, but they'll be here in a little yeah. bit to be able to go uh, into all kinds of detail. Uh, I'm really looking forward to talking to, to them for sure. Um, what's your, what would you say that your, uh, what does visionary art mean to you personally? We talk about visionary a lot, art a lot, especially in this show. Um, what does it mean to you? What does the, the, the term visionary art mean to you? Uh, well, uh, do you still have me? My screen is going black. Oh, there you are. All right. Uh, well, that, that's a, a distinct thing that comes from your imagination. I mean, really in a nutshell. Um, and of course, everything we see at one point is sort of processed through our imagination and our everyday experience of seeing the world around us is in that sense a visionary experience. We're seeing a, an interpreted take on the world when, when we, you know, look around us. But uh, to create something in your imagination that comes from your own inner self that, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be abstract like a lot of my stuff, uh, but that it's not uh, a photo that you're copying or it can have parts of photos that you've artfully put together uh, in some allegorical way to be able to express some unique inner thing. Um, we're talking about expressing something that comes from deep inside that you can't just uh, pull off of a shelf and show people. You have to find some way of bringing it out from within yourself and creating a piece of art from it. It's the only way to share it. Uh, Do you, I don't know if that really came across as a definition of visionary well, yeah, It, uh, it kind of gave us uh, an idea of what it means to you, that's for sure. Uh, do you? Uh, Alex is the guy. And, and we definitely are going to ask him a lot about that. Um, for sure. Uh, I just wanted to hear your take on it. Uh, I know you, you, you've really been into, uh, you're, you're on the same wavelength, a similar wavelength uh, with Alex. And uh, I, wanted to, I wanted to hear your take on the whole thing. Um, 
Do you? Uh, I wish I had a better yeah. answer. These years, I don't. It's sort of crazy. Um, where do you uh, where where do you draw your inspiration from? Is it is it uh, is it like what what do you find inspires you the most? Uh, is it you know everyday things? Is it uh, something down inside personally? Is you know do you get inspired by a bird outside the window? Or? Well, definitely nature is a big inspiration. I mean, Michelle and I live out here in nature. I mean, we're immersed in in the woods and we're out in it every day. Uh, that's a big part of it. I mean, uh, I just love the outdoors, and um, both of us have a, a, a keen interest in what you see when you get up close. Uh, she's done a lot of macro photography, uh, but I've done a little bit too, just in the course of researching objects for painting. Um, but uh, you know, I could just stare at this stuff forever. I mean, the tree roots that you'll see exposed at the river bank. Uh, you know, lichen growing on stone. I, you know, you spend enough time around this stuff, and you you start to see so much more in it than just, oh, that's a pretty pattern. You know, you can start to see the whole process behind it. And you know, a lot of my art, if you if you really look at it, you'll see it's either about things that are growing, or things that are forming, or things that are in some sort of a process. I'm very interested in processes and how they create visual things. I, as a kid, I was interested in insects because they had these beautiful uh, exotic bodies but they were all formed around how they function you know whether it's their pattern that you know evolved over the course of avoiding predators or you know the the weird bumps on the back of their head that you know for whatever reason uh, it were advantageous to their existence more so than being a burden and so they kept them and so they ended up with this exotic beautiful shape that was all based on uh, on the process of how they live. Uh, and so really that's, that's kind of at the core of what I do as an artist. Um, I'm really interested in, in how things form or how things evolve or how things change and the beauty behind that process. Um, it, it looks like uh, Alex Nelson might be ready to chat with us. So before that happens, we're going to take a little break. Uh, we're going to show you a video of the first Paradise Artist Retreat and uh, a couple messages from sponsors. It will only be a, f you know, a few minutes. And, uh, and then we can come back and we can all talk with Alex and Allison Gray and uh, get more in depth uh, about everything we've been talking about so far. Uh, Steve, feel free to hang with us and uh, we'll try to get everybody on and, and we'll talk a little bit more about, about what we're doing. And then uh, just to the folks that are watching at home, if you are interested in the Paradise Artist Retreat, if you order your tickets today and you add your t-shirt size in with your order comments, we'll, uh, we'll get you a t-shirt. Uh, some lucky folks might actually get a hoodie too. So we'll be back in about 10 minutes with Alex and Allison Gray, and then we'll continue the conversation about visionary art and the Paradise Artist Retreat. This is everything we could have hoped for. The, the excitement and the thoroughness of people's participation is uh, more than we could have asked for. People are really embracing everything that we're doing here. They're taking a lot of the workshops. Each individual has signed up for four or five of them. Um, everyone's got some great projects going on in the various different painting rooms. A few people have three or four things that they're, uh, you know, just cruising through. I mean, it's a, it's a really intensive, creative vibe and I mean this is there's there's more more art there's more creativity there's more learning going on in this little campus than at this particular moment than you'll see in, in you know a lot of art universities to me this is like the uh, you know like a groundbreaking threshold of uh, a tattoo related event with no tattooing drawing color theory you know composition um, you know just anatomy everything um, and applying all that information tattooing is pretty exciting it was the most amazing new experience it was unlike any other convention I'd ever been to it was just a, a convergence of like minds and people who were really serious about what they were doing no sideshow acts just serious people making serious art tattoos being recognized 
as fine art and, and, and us doing this, the same kind of homework that our predecessors ha have done with, uh, with other forms of fine art. means that all of our clients have access to all the possibilities that are out there in the world of tattooing and they're going to come into our shops asking for that. If we're going to succeed and survive as, as a business, we got to be able to do it all. Now just about everyone knows the value of expanding their artistic repertoire and uh, building their knowledge base through other mediums. And I love the fact that we're doing, you know, we're doing figure drawing, we've been doing still life work. We're, um, Kim Reed is out teaching her landscape painting thing today. Um, you know, Sean Barber and Nick Baxter have been doing, have been doing their seminars and workshops on, on portrait painting. So working in another medium is perfect. You can, you can get really good at doing new things and bring that back to your clientele and be like, hey, maybe we can try this and really expand your tattooing range from there. People in art school are starting to seriously consider tattooing as a logical outcome for what they're going to do at the end of art school. That's been a long time in coming. It didn't happen overnight. My painting, my drawing, my sculpture, printmaking, all of those things have informed the way that I tattoo. Tattooing has, I think, made me a much tighter, more careful painter. Painting has made me a much freer and, um, you know, looser and more intuitive tattooer. The more you explore and the more you uh, discover new techniques and new ways of approaching light and dark and uh, depth of field, um, details, uh, airiness, all those things that you might see in a painting, you can apply to a tattoo. The people who are just coming here, I mean, especially some of the, the newer tattooers who are just getting into it, this is, uh, this is kind of like the, well, you know, it's, it's kind of like the name implies. It's a paradise for them. They're, they're just blown away. I'm Ben from Trip 6 Studios. Let me show you my ego. Over the years I've been tattooing, I've started developing wrist problems and I've noticed a lot of artists have developed a similar problem. With the Ego, the idea was to design a light, affordable machine. So here it is, the Ego. The Ego uses our patented power triangle system, it simulates front and back spring. You have six different grades of rubber, from hard to soft, hard to soft, simulating front and back spring. RCA jack, nice and convenient, nice stable connection. Vice. A little bit of pressure, nice super secure lock. This is the Ego Bio Grip, this is our new grip. It's super comfortable, it's made of super soft silicon. It has a part at the back to help relieve wrist strain and a part at the front to help relieve vibration on the front finger. Tatlewists love the feel of a coil machine. There's a lot of rotaries don't behave like a coil. With the Ego, we've simulated the front and the back spring of a coil machine, so you get the best of both worlds. Some of the advantages of using the Ego is you've got extremely extremely lightweight machine which is very movable in your hands you, you, you're not restricted it's more like a pen it's like they're tattooing with a marker and that's the, the whole idea of the shape of the ego and get the center of balance over the top of the tube and away from the back of your hand so that enables you to have a bit more freedom and a bit more of a marker like experience when you're tattooing with that it gives you the ability to tattoo for longer and have a little bit more control over your tattooing process because your wrists aren't getting tired and the weight of the machine is, is nicely balanced. So I've given the Egos a go and the speed is just amazing. Uh, you know, it's just like using a coil. It really is. You know, for the speed and the quality work I can put out. Um, I'm, I'm very, very happy with them. I have many Egos from Bears. Um, probably about six now and I'm very happy with them all. So much time and effort went into making the Ego. I'm happy where it's at, and so are a lot of other artists. It's definitely taken off.
And we are back. Thank you all for sticking with us through the break. Uh, we've got Alex and Allison Gray with us as well as Steve Peace. Uh, we're getting Michelle Wortman back on the line as well. There she is. You'll see her shortly. Okay. Hello, Alex and Allison. Welcome to the show. Hey, how are you doing? Great. Um, you can hear me okay? I can hear you guys wonderfully. Perfect. Your audio, your audio is coming through really clear. Um, do you guys, uh, Alex and Allison, what's your take on the retreat? Uh, what have your experiences been? Well, we've never been to this retreat with Guy and Michelle, and we're really looking forward to it. Uh, what's exciting to me is that uh, people familiar with uh, tattooing understand uh, what it is to uh, work in proximity to each other, oftentimes in a shop. And uh, so there's a community vibe that happens uh, with the social interaction of tattooing. And uh, so this promotes a, a collective kind of uh, creative energy that is extraordinary. And given the sort of non-egoic and super professional and the best draftsman in the world coming together, uh, respecting each other, and developing their skills. This is a, almost an unprecedented opportunity for uh, people who are honing their skills and their vision uh, to come together and have an extraordinary uh, evolutionary leap in their own work. And we're looking forward to uh, doing that for ourselves as well. Mm -hmm. I'm really looking forward yeah. to, uh, to, to it myself. Um, we've been talking a little bit about visionary art uh, up until this point in the show. Um, if you were to define visionary art um, for the folks watching, what, what would you guys define visionary art to you? Uh, you know, what is the definition to you? Go ahead. And you can both, you can both put in your share. Right? I mean, we're, we want to we hear what both of you have to say. Well, I think that um, visionary art is art that issues from the visionary and uh, in my uh, particular work, I would say mystical visionary experience. You have to, uh, there's one of Allison's, really beautiful. Um, when one enters the visionary mystic realm, one sees visions. And uh, this is a dimension that you can't take your uh, camera into, but you can take your memory. And these things uh, basically etch uh, into our neurons. And uh, we may think we're going mad if we don't find someone else to uh, compare it to. So for a lot of people, seeing visionary art is an affirmation of their own visionary experiences. And they feel, oh, I'm not crazy. Uh, look, other people have the same experiences. Experiences of luminosity, experiences of, uh, you know, uh, transparency, uh, experiences of uh, seeing everything as a cascade of jewels. Uh, seeing the uh, environments uh, on the inner realms that are uh, made of, of light. And so these vistas and realms have been known to mystics uh, and documented throughout all the sacred art traditions. And really, we know that holy people glow. They have halos and auras and things like that. And uh, so we see that in Buddhist art that's centuries old. We see that in thousand-year-old uh, icons from the Christian tradition. So uh, really, we're working with the uh, s symbolism that's been known uh, even in cave art. We have the Australian kind of X-ray uh, painting. And that's uh, actually something that uh, shamanic art uh, shows all over the world. The indigenous uh, people uh, saw through things and they saw into the realm of the interconnectedness with all living uh, energies and beings. And so uh, 
This is a realm that's been well described throughout the world's sacred art, visionary art, and in the Western tradition, starting really with Hieronymus Bosch and, and uh, Van Eyck and uh, those artists. Uh, this was the first time that a very realistic portrayal of some of these inner dimensions uh, was attempted. And as artists have increased their skill, the description and depiction of the surfaces and the infinite dimensions of the visionary have uh, become a lot more crispy, a lot more focused. Um, and I, you want to say something about your uh, work well, here, Alison? Well, I was going to say that uh, my earliest uh, experiences of altered states, which was primarily LSD, um, I experienced uh, images of symbols washing over surfaces. Uh, they were maybe, maybe glowing symbols, but I did see them washing over my face and my body. And in fact, my very earliest uh, so are we still there? My very earliest solo show was uh, secret writing. And so secret writing came directly from visions from, an, from altered states. And then, from there, I uh, I got I learned from the uh, LSD uh, that uh, an essentialized worldview, basically, that all things were made up of three things: chaos, order, and secret writing. It was something that I heard or got, you know, very strongly early on in my work. Has been about that for forty years, and it's been following that. Uh, now, chaos was. Order was was the place that you go when you're when you're tripping, and your fountains and drains are all interconnected and united, and all the, everything's made of light, and we are all one. That's order. Chaos is order plus entropy. It's order. It has the systems, the particles and the waves, and the, you know. But it also has uh, and and it, the sucking and the blowing energy, you know. But it also has entropy. Everything is falling apart. So I created a symbol that meant chaos, symbol that meant order, and secret writing. And the secret writing is the place where the manifestation that we all uh, hear and feel and receive the divine message, which I, we think of as creativity. And then it comes out, it comes out through symbols. Everything, as artists, we are symbol makers. And really, as human beings, we are symbol makers. Everything we make, our shoes have a symbol, our hair has a symbol, you know, you know, uh, whatever. So every, and of course, we wear, we wear our cosmic symbol. So anyway, everything is symbols. As an artist, I'm a symbol maker. Those are my symbols. And uh, all of those principles and things that I learned, I've learned through altered states and have been, you know, uh, making my work um, reflect them, you know, in my own conceptual way. My work is more conceptual uh, than it is, uh, say, literal or, um, figurative or organic my work is you know not often you know uh, but it is organic it's just a different level like when you're tripping you know <laughs> everything is sucking and blowing like multi-colored strands of uh, of energy oh you know? and that's what I, I i do my best to uh point a sharpened stick at that you know well, well things that are once organic sometimes become crystalline Mm -hmm. uh, if you, if uh, petrified wood and things like that, okay. uh, it, it's so it's possible yes. that the uh, the crystalline can be organic too. Right. <laughs> so, as an answer to the question, what is visionary art? Uh, we, we, I think we'll all agree that it's art that comes from our. Uh, uh, great. That was that was an exceptional answer from both of you. I appreciate the the uh, the length that you went to to get that to get all the information in there. Um, a little question for our group. Uh, Michelle and Steve, you're still with us. Uh, have you guys ever uh, had to, I mean, not had to, uh, found yourself in an altered state uh, to be creative? And uh, have you found um, inspiration from an altered state to, uh, to create artwork? I don't know if they heard me. I can't oh, hear you. I'm a lightweight. It's kind of <laughs> a lot on my I end. understand. Um, Okay. Well, we're going to be bringing Chet Zar in pretty soon. Uh, Steve, you have any uh, any uh, parting questions for any of these folks that uh, you might want to? 
I'm just wondering what Alex thinks about having tattooists replicate his work. You know, I know James Kern does a lot of stuff, and uh, you know, how does he feel about about that? You know, I know, you know, it's hard for us to. I've done a few Alex Gray pieces, and they're really hard to replicate. But to come up with them, is, you know, it's a million times more more work. And does that offend him, or does it? You know, is it kind of a tribute to him? Geez, uh, I am nothing but honored, and uh, in fact, every newsletter from uh, Cosm. Dot org. We uh, put a new tattoo. Uh, people, At least one, sometimes yeah, more than one. People send them in, and uh, then we share them with the uh, community. Like, uh, and and they're extremely creative. I've seen them on practically every part of the body, and uh, uh, some of them look extremely painful, and some of them show incredible uh, devotion to the. Um, Worldview. There's a fan in uh, in Europe that uh, Guy and Michelle uh, turned me on to, and his entire body uh, on the back side uh, is Alex Gray uh, kind of collage. I just wanted to say that a portion of Alex's book that just came out, Net of Being, uh, covers t tattoo arts that that. Uh, concern his work on people's bodies. So he has this, an entire section devoted to that. And uh, I just wanted to say that one of our requests in return for people's use of Alex's art on their body is that they send us a picture. We really, really like it if we get a record of these uh, replicas at, on skin. And, and, and the person to send it to is Allison. That's A-L-L-Y-S-O-N at Cosm. So if you have a tattoo of Alex Gray's art on you and you're watching this, please send it to Allison at Cosm.org. We would really like to have a collection of these images. And we, uh, we ask that when you're thinking of doing an Alex Gray collage uh, of our Alex Gray uh, tattoo, that you get somebody who's really good to do it because it represents well. <laughs> and also you'll be so much happier with it if you need any, any, any suggestions for that, please write that are good and uh, we would uh, be beautiful, of course, and send us a picture and uh, we can reproduce it anywhere we want. That's our other thing. We just reproduce it anywhere we want and, and, and uh, we reproduce it on our uh, newsletter every week. Yeah. Well, um, finding a great artist is definitely uh, an important message that we repeat over and over again on this show. It's finding an artist that, that can uh, to really do the, to do the piece justice, you know. Um, don't just find the first person that's closest to you. Do your research and find someone that's really going to really do the piece a lot of justice. And uh, it's, it, that's, that's a message that we stress on this show a lot. <clears throat> so uh, we're waiting on Chet Czar. Hopefully he'll be able to join us soon. Uh, it'll be a nice contrast. Uh, Chet's kind of a, a dark painter uh, where the, uh, the grays, you guys are much more luminous than Chet. Um, you have similarities and differences. Uh, hopefully we'll get him on here soon and, and uh, we can have some conversation back and forth. Uh, Honor, it'll be great to see him again at the show. Uh, are you guys going to be attending any other seminars while you're there? Um, is there anything you're going to peek in on? I program and really scoured. It sounds like it's going to be an amazing program. Yeah, so many of the artists there we really admire. Everyone who's been on the show is just incredible. We have a lot of appoint. We have some appointments anyway to talk to people one on one or one on. Two. We always mm -hmm. do everything too, so. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's going to be an amazing experience for a lot of folks. Um, I'm really looking forward to it personally. And uh, I think Chet is joining us. Hey, Chet, can you hear us? Yeah. You are I'm here. here. <coughs> hey. So, Chet, how's it going? Uh, you're on with uh, Alex and Allison Gray, and uh, we're working on James Kern as well. Hey. What's Hello. up, Alex? Allison, James. <laughs> Am I uh, audible? I, I, I can hear you just fine. Hey, James. How's it going? Hello, Alex and Allison. Hello. Hey, it truly What's is up? a Skype extravaganza. 
<laughs> so, uh, Chet, we've been talking with uh, Alex and Allison about uh, visionary art and uh, what it means to them. Um, James, this question can go to you as well. Uh, we'll just kind of leave it up to you to see who, uh, how this flows. Um, uh, what, what's your definition of visionary art and uh, is it important to you? Well, it's funny because Gabe was telling me that's going to be a question we were going to talk about, and my mind just drew a complete blank. So I had to really think about it because I'm, you know, I've always kind of just approached art from a, an intuitive standpoint, and um, <clears throat> I never thought about myself as a visionary artist or a dark artist or anything other than just an artist. And uh, but once once I started thinking about it, um, I was thinking, yeah, I'm a visionary artist. I mean. It's it's all about creating this in, internal vision and, and putting it out there and sharing it with other people. Um, I think it's important because uh, uh, you can kind of connect with people on on a deeper level or on a spiritual level. And uh, I don't know. I just I, I love the whole concept. It's kind of you know it kind of touches on everything that I'm interested in, which is. Um, you know, mysticism and fantasy and subversion. It's, you know, it's, it's kind of subversive in a way, a way. Uh, visionary art, I yeah. think. It's, you guys hear, yeah, can you guys hear me? I can hear you. Well, Things we're having a little bit of a, a, just a little Skype issue. Uh, it's kind of what, what happens when <laughs> we're using, using the technology, I, you know? Should I? Should I keep talking? Oh, or, we, uh, we heard everything you were saying. Uh, you know, there might have been a little drop out here and there, but uh, we're hearing it. Uh, okay. Uh, I just, yeah, I guess I'll just finish up this thought that um, it's kind of subversive in a good way. You know, it's, it's, it's like, like I said, sort of, I think visionary art touches on, um, uh, on people's, on a subconscious level. And you're kind of opening up The, the idea of <clears throat> uh, spirituality and, and even psychedelics, and you're sort of making it a little more palatable to people that might not have a lot of experience with that. Um, you know, and it, it's, it's, it's kind of pointing to things that a lot of people don't normally talk about, and it's, and, and I don't know. I think it's good. It's good <laughs> yeah. <shit>. Uh, James, <laughs> guys, could you speak to that point a little uh, as, as far as visionary art? Uh, what's your take on the whole deal? Well, visionary art is kind of a, a new term that kind of envelops a lot of different artists over the years, where a personal vision of the world and the universe and and how they express it um, on in art, yeah. you know. Um, can you everyone hear me? Okay. Yeah. You have to touch. Absolutely. Okay. You're, you're going to hear uh, some some okay. odd audio here and there just as people join and drop out in in the Skype conversation. Um, if I can't hear you, I'll I'll let you know. Okay, that's great. I can't hear myself in my headphones for some reason, <laughs> um, but I can hear everybody else. So uh, anyway, um, artists like Salvador Dali and other people who just had a completely different vision of what the world looked like to them, you know, Hieronymus Bosch, as it was mentioned oh, yeah. before, um, all those people had their own intense personal yeah, vision of how the art should be and, and their own interpretation of the world and that's what visionary art is to me. It encompasses a lot of different people but they all have their own intense personal vision. Definitely. Uh, it's, <laughs> these are such great answers. I love all of you guys for joining us and making this show great. Um, do you guys have any specific questions for each other? Is there anything that you've wanted to talk about? Um, <laughs> do they, you know, Chet? Do you have anything for uh, Alex and Allison? Uh, James, same thing for you or, or the other way around. Um, you guys are all going to be at the retreat, I know. And uh, I'm excited about that. <laughs> yeah, me too. I can't wait. can't wait to see all of you guys and hang out. And oh, make my art. God. What an opportunity. I know. <laughs> thank, <laughs> tell me about thank it. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. It is paradise. <laughs> well, I love it because also it's like a family reunion. Yes. It's yep. not like we've never painted together before. It's right. uh, the, it's a wonderful continuity of creative friendships and uh, and evolution. Uh, everybody's body of work has has expanded and gotten more beautiful and complex, and and so we're uh, really excited uh, to be with so many 
extraordinary uh, visionary artist. And uh, I think the, uh, the tattoo artists are some of the ones who really respect the skill that uh, all of the artists that I know of that are on this program display, that there's been discipline in what they're doing. And in that way, that's kind of how the artists, I think, start to regard what they're doing as having, you know, it, it, for lack of a better word, a sacred component, because uh, it's you have to put a lot of work into something. You know, you have to uh, put a lot of devotional labor uh, into something to hone it and to discipline your your mind, to focus your mind, and so. Uh, this is a uh, in in that kind of um, mm, forum of respect. The uh, artists come and, and learn. Oh, look at the kind of techniques that Chet is doing, working with oils, and and you know these beings emerge, uh, and they see they seem to just like spontaneously uh, flower out of uh, your uh, kind of uh, dark, but uh, the, your characters carry the weight of a decaying world and a, a decaying worldview of, of militarism and, and r religiosity that is deadening. And so they, yet they're human and they're even, uh, uh, beings that you identify with because they represent the woundedness of our world, of the psyche of our world. And so uh, I, I think your works are so beautiful, Chet, for your willingness to embrace the shadow, uh, which is something that uh, people just spend their lives avoiding uh, rather than uh, facing and integrating. And I think that uh, the only way that you can get to heaven seems to be through hell for most people. <laughs> That's a fact. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Uh, that's a really nice thing to say. What's What's funny is that um, I didn't. I came upon that realization myself probably not even that long ago. Maybe maybe two years ago. Um, up to that point, like I said, I've always just gone intuitively. Um, it was all about escaping, working in the film industry, and and being able to do you know what I wanted to do. I was I felt like I was stagnant, and I wasn't being able to create my own visions. And um, I, it just dawned on me at one point. I was I kept because I kept thinking, especially in the beginning, because I've always been very positive and and spiritual, and really approaching life um, the way that you and Alice to do. You know this kind of positive. It's all about spirit, and it's and it's about being good and doing good. And so, I, but all I wanted to paint were these monsters and things. And it was like, why am I doing this? Is there something wrong with me? Am I trying to make other people suffer the way I feel like I suffer sometimes? I couldn't really figure it out. And and it, and it kind of dawned on me at one point that um, it, I think that I'm painting. I am painting. I'm painting the dead. I'm painting. And, and uh, decay, but I'm, it's it's death of all the things that we want to die, the things that are ready to die, you know, the things in in this world now that are, are you know we're done with them. We don't need those anymore. It's like you know we're we need to move forward, and we are moving forward. And I think that the that my artwork is kind of expressing that. So it's kind of weird, but it's a, but it but it's a positive thing. I see it as a positive thing because it's death and decay of bad things, you know. So. Um, exactly. we, you know, um, we getting a lot of questions from the Skype, I mean from the chat, and uh, while well, you're talking about death, and, uh, and uh, it's a good time for me to ask one, um, we've got a person who wants to know, and this is open to anybody who wants to answer, um, have you ever had any you know, touches with the afterlife, uh, is, has it ever, uh, and has it, you know, affected your art or anything like, you know, have you, have you tried to recreate those experiences? <laughs> I, I have never tried to create the afterlife in my art, but I, I had past really? life experience. Well, I mean, what do you call the uh, vision of the 
uh, order. You know, that's like a heaven world. I uh, suppose world that's of, true. Of I unity. think that's here right now, though. I think that's never ending and eternal. It's something that exists without time, without life or death. It's beyond death. It's beyond life. And we go there when we're in our most elevated, highest consciousness, which is that, that place that is completely one. We are one. All, you know, as one. We say that at Cosm. Mm -hmm. We're as one. We're, we're just connected and fountains and drains of love uh, in the form of light. Yeah, it's light in the form of love. Um, James, you've uh, you've recreated some of Alex's uh, some artwork in tattoo form before, yes. Yes, I have. Uh, have. How was that experience? Uh, well, the first time was a huge learning experience, and actually, I think it changed the direction of my tattooing as a whole. Um, trying to figure out how to represent something so complex, the first piece I did was. Um, one of the triptych panels from the Holy Fire triptych on my brother's leg, actually. It's a, a man, you know, with flames shooting up around him. Um, <laughs> and uh, being struck by, you know, light of fire. And uh, it was really, it took a lot of time to figure out the approach of the tattoo and how to dissect um, painting down into its component elements to be able to recreate it on skin. Uh, figuring out the process of doing that was really the most challenging part, and it is with any kind of reproduction of art, but especially Alex's because they're so complex. So uh, I learned a lot trying to break it down into you know small pieces that were able to be tattooed in you know, a few hours at a time, and it made me uh, think a lot about my techniques and layering, and also uh, what to do first and what to do later. Uh, it, it was. Big learning experience, and it kind of changed my approach to tattooing in general. After doing that first piece, uh, do, do you feel like you uh, you learned a little bit about how Alex might approach a, a piece after after you were done tattooing it? Did it give you you know <laughs> a little bit of insight? Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Did, did it change uh, Did it change I, your personal work uh, for the better? Would you say? I, I may have looked at Alex's paintings closer than he has since he's completed them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would agree with James. I think he's uh, one of the most amazing uh, transcribers and translators of uh, my uh, paintings. Uh, and he's been responsible for some of the most extraordinary uh uh, on people's hands, all, all over different portions of their body, and and never without his own um, uh, lens. You know, it it's it's not just a reproduction. It's it's a James Kern uh, work of art, and so I'm really fortunate that uh, people come to him and request it, or that he's decided to incorporate uh, my body of work into the bodies that uh, come into his shop because uh, uh, we've reproduced uh, several of them actually in the Net of Being book because uh, they're so extraordinary and so I, I'm just nothing but grateful that uh, an amazing artist like uh, James has, uh, has really looked so uh, carefully at the work, and it's uh, it's not easy for me to really figure out how to approach a work. Like one of the works in our uh, studio here, uh, I feel like uh, I've, I'm still going through a learning process on uh, how I will create these networks and webs uh, that are really quite complex, and uh, uh, so. It's great to see it uh, reproduced, and sometimes it inspires me to uh, do new things as well. Uh, it definitely is challenging, <laughs> but I'm not afraid of a challenge. <laughs> uh, that you've proven that, actually. <laughs> and I you the bar for a number of tattoo artists, too, it, just in terms of uh, willingness to take on ridiculously complex uh, impossible. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, Sometimes I don't know what I've gotten myself into until I'm in there already. Uh, um, <laughs> quick question for, uh, for Chet. Chet, I know you've had your your work has hey. been reproduced as well in tattoo form. Um, 
how do you feel about um, your t your your paintings being rep reproduced uh, on people's bodies? Uh, I love it. I think it's great. It's amazing. It's like Alex said. It's a total honor that someone would want to wear a piece of artwork that you've created, you know, for a lifetime. Um. So you're you're totally cool with people do. It's kind of the um, one of the greatest honors you can have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. I just uh, I kind of rip off Alex um, in a way. I saw one time, maybe it was on Facebook or someone. Someone asking permission. He said, "As long as you send a picture." So now that's what I say all the time because <laughs> it's a good idea. It's like, yeah, you can do it. Just send me a picture. So I always say that. Um, I, I love it. We had to think of what we really wanted in return, and and that is it. <laughs> want a doc? Yeah. You want them to get a real get it done really well, like by somebody right. like James who really takes the time. Yep. And to make it look great so that we all look great and mm -hmm. have the permission to reproduce that tattoo anytime we want to <laughs> so that yeah. those three rules I think we can all we can all uh, live happily together yeah. <laughs> and as, as, as a tattoo artist you know I always try to do the absolute best job I can with every tattoo but particularly with doing a reproduction of someone's art if they are excited enough to have that art reproduced on their body for a lifetime to Try to honor that artwork with as best of a reproduction as you can possibly do is, I think, the minimum you should do, you know? Right. Yeah, I, you guys have balls. That's all I got to say. <laughs> <laughs> Just putting that, that's that's the one, you know, the thing that's so scary about tattooing to me is doing work that's permanent. Um, it's kind of kept me uh, from really giving it a shot for a long time, although I'm, I'm going to try and learn it one of these days. But well, I, the trick I, I think is just to, <laughs> to try to do your absolute best every time, and there's no yeah. exceptions to that, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. Chet, Chet, do you have tattoos? Um, I got a couple. Um, nothing worth. I've got this one tattoo that's kind of put in my paintings. <laughs> it's very simple. Wow. I got it in like 1987, after wow. I, I I had a this uh, big enlightening enlightenment experience. Um, with psychedelics, actually, and it's it was kind of funny. I, I got it as a symbol to not forget what I what I had learned. And um, years later, I got involved in the in the tattoo scene, and it was like you know I felt very I don't know like it was this whole different scene I wasn't really involved in, and um, kind of felt like an outsider. And then I realized it's like wow, it's like probably the most spiritual uh, time of my life was this symbol. symbolized by this tattoo I got. So it's like there is a connection there even way back when I was 19 or 20 years old or something. So the other ones are really lame. you got to see this. It's so bad. <laughs> you can see it? It's like, a <laughs> it's like a little peace sign. <laughs> yeah, but you know, even even the small, <laughs> simplest tattoos <laughs> when I was 18. Um, can be <laughs> incredibly significant for people. Like uh, Lyle Tuttle refers to them as travel marks. You know, and and they mark a time and space in your life and your history that's important to you. Whether it's a silly little tattoo or a giant epic back piece, it, it's something that carries with you the whole energy and spirit of that moment for the rest of your life. You know. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's why I don't. It's like an, I, I I would like to uh, enhance this this spiritual tattoo, the triangle one, but at the same time, I don't want to mess with it because it means so much and it's it hasn't changed since i first got it and the uh the peace sign the little crappy peace sign on my left shoulder is so bad and lame that i don't want to mess with it either because <laughs> it's almost like you, know, you can try and make it good but it can't it's not going to be any better than how bad it well you know even if you covered it up completely it would still be there <laughs> you know what i'm saying you know, it'll still be part of you even even bad yeah. tattoos have, have a, uh, a distinct place you know um, definitely, definitely. With, without my bad tattoos, <laughs> yeah, I probably would never have so. good tattoos. You know, like, <laughs> everybody yeah. who's, everyone who's, anyone who's got tattoos has got one bad one, I'm sure. Yeah, um, it's all a learning experience. So, uh, Alex, do you think you would ever be tattooed, Allison? Never. never. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know it for sure. I mean, it's just, it's a, you know, it, it's a, it's a conceptual. Uh, you know, dif di decision that you make, and I and I love our tattooed friends, and we have so many that are 
greatly and, and, and largely tattooed and I love them dearly and I and I admire them and they have courage and they have and they are creative and everything. It, it doesn't mean though that I'm going to be tattooed. I'm not going to be tattooed. <laughs> I love my skin They're the way not it for is. Everyone. No. Yeah. That's okay. I I uh, I've we've gone through uh, uh, tattooing fantasy phases though. Oh sure. And uh, at one point, Allison wanted her language uh, tattooed to her head. My scalp. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, and in in my early twenties, before yeah. I met Alex, I investigated having my language tattooed to my scalp, and um, nobody would do it back then. <laughs> I, first of all, it was illegal in the state of Massachusetts, right? I had to go to Rhode Island to right. find out about it, and they wouldn't do it because I had, didn't have any other tattoos. They didn't know me. It was like, you know what I mean? I'm sure they would have done it to their friends and everything, but they wouldn't do it to a girl, and, and I was only 20. And it was just like, I'm glad that they basically said, no, we don't do that. So, uh, and after that, I just, I just never really wanted to. It was going to be my secret language. You know, my hair would grow over it. And uh, so it is called secret language. So, I, you know, it was an interesting idea. But yeah, I, I still love that. that. You know, and then I had some full body tattoo ideas, you know, like a, a, a web work with windows into other worlds and things like that all over. But a really diagrammatic kind of thing that and I just thought, I'm not going to do this. It, 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 you know, but I respect the uh, the yearning to completely remake your own identity uh, by your uh, impressing your inner decisions, your imagination, taking your imagination onto your skin, wearing your uh, own decisions. And uh, it's like you're taking a stand for something. So uh, all of the uh, commitment that it takes to uh, engrave this iconography into one's uh, skin. Uh, to me, that's a message of uh, of um, embodying whatever the iconography uh, has as its inherent worldview. So I think that every artist and every work of art is a reflection of a worldview. And I think that the uh, that's how the visionary art is uh, something that is uh, uh, differentiated from uh, much uh, artwork and simply realistic art, uh, because you're pointing to and embracing uh, another dimension of reality, a visionary dimension of reality. Wow. <laughs> I don't know who's rocking out. That might be Damon. <laughs> All right, this this is gonna get a little crazy. Uh, guys, back with us. Uh, Damon has joined the conversation, and he's obviously rocking out. Chat, what's up? Hey, what's up? Um, hey, Damon. Thanks for that hey. blast of tunes, man. That was awesome. Let's shake us up a little bit. <laughs> that was that was awesome. Um, welcome to the show, Damon. Uh, I don't know if you've seen what we've been talking about here. We've been talking about uh, visionary art. Um, we've been talking tattoos. We've been talking painting, uh, how it affects tattooing and, and how painting affects life and all of that stuff. And it's, it's good to have you with us. And uh, hopefully yeah. you can share some of your personal insights too. Well, it's glad to be here. A pleasure to, uh, and I'm sorry I'm late. It's cool. Better late than never. <laughs> uh, that's what I've always believed. Hey, James. <laughs> hey, how's it going, Damon? So, I love the tiger with the top hat. <laughs> the downy tiger, yes. That's awesome. Yes, downies need love too. Uh, so I've got a pretty open-ended question uh, from the chat that I'm going to ask, and you guys can all answer in as long or short an answer as you like. Uh, whoever kind of jumps in first will probably go first. Um, it's kind of probably more geared towards the, the visionary arts. So uh, the... I'm just going to read it as it rolls. Um, as a creator of culture, uh, culture swing, how we operate as a society, do you think that uh, visionary art can help sway society towards a more positive flow? Okay. Chet, you go first.
<laughs> just on a spiritual level and like Alex was saying it, it, it it's it's a, such a great point it really does make you feel like you're not crazy I mean it's like that with with anything even uh, a lot of music I've I've, I've uh, listened to in the in the past political stuff or whatever it's like it 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 makes you feel like you're not alone you know there's something but but the visionary stuff is very very much on a on a deeper level so i think you know it kind of affects people on a deeper level and maybe the uh, transformation into culture will will start on a deeper level you know maybe it's not obvious right away but it's touching people deeply and those changes will kind of come out naturally i believe or i hope anyway okay james your turn Oh yeah, I mean, I think I think it's one of the few <laughs> things. Art is one of the few things that can inspire the masses. Um, I actually watched a movie the other day. I can't remember exactly what it was called. It had Christian Bale in it. Whereas this society that was trying to get rid of war because they felt that emotions had actually caused war, so they were getting rid of everything in the world that would stir up your emotions and giving people this Prozac-like drug injected into their skin every few hours, and uh, they were destroying all the beautiful works of art because it caused people to be emotional. And, it, you know, I think the, the meaning behind that really is that it's art and music and all that stuff that makes us have a culture that really moves a culture to develop and change and, and do things. And if you don't have that sort of thing, then you're stagnant and you don't, you're not creative and you follow the leader without any uh, question, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. hey, Damon, because you just joined us, uh, um, what's, yeah, what's yeah. your take on... Uh, well, visionary art or just art in general? You like the most fun. Well, I think in reference to the question, um, I, I've always felt like trying to provide positive or at least cheerful artwork that's cheerful in some respect uh, helps. I feel like society tends to go downhill without an effort reversing the course. And as artists, as visionaries, as, uh, as people that uh, tend to be leaders in their groups, um, we have a responsibility to provide artwork that pushes towards a positive uh, mindset, you know, to encourage emotion, to encourage uh, responding based on our hearts, to encourage uh, talking about and seeing and feeling things that aren't just in the realm of what we can touch, um, to push people towards uh, not being blind followers, as James said, and... Uh, and to just overall, it's, it makes people happy, you know? And when we're happy, we make decisions that aren't based on fear, and we make better decisions. Does any of that make any sense? Yeah, it makes, it makes perfect sense. Uh, we've been showing, we've been kind of scrolling through some of your artwork, and uh, <laughs> it's, it's almost a complete contrast uh, as far as, you know, you, it, you, we showed a whole bunch of skulls and, uh, and sharks and, and shit. Right. Right? Right. That was pretty hilarious. I, I, your answer was very genuine, and I appreciate it. The, uh, the art on our end was, was, skulls make me happy, too. Interesting to be. Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so, to uh, Alex and Allison, um, I'm going to get to you guys about, uh, do you think that uh, visionary art can, uh, can push culture forward in a, in a positive way? I think that it is pushing culture ahead in a positive way. And all of these artists are kind of uh, representatives of opening up art to this. Uh, well, uh, I think it first came in with the kind of psychedelic wave that we cannot deny the fact of there being a visionary world. If, uh, if uh, it's only people that haven't looked through the lens uh, it, you know, it's like before when the church people didn't want to look through the telescope or the microscope or something like that, and they didn't want to see these new realms. Uh, when you look through the psychedelic lens, you see a new realm. And so, so many people all over the world have experienced these realms that, uh, th and many of them are artists. And they're basically uh, transcribing uh, this realm with with uh, ever more uh, kind of uh, uh, technical prowess and uh, therefore we're expanding people's consciousness 
into understanding our luminous uh, energy bodies and things like that, the uh, interconnectedness of all living things. Uh, there's a, a connectedness with the cosmos itself. And uh, when you start to appreciate the interconnectedness of our existence with the birth or creation of the cosmos, and how could we be anything other than the scintilla of this creative force? And uh, what is truly remarkable about human beings is that they have a creative imagination, and that's their doorway to contact with the divine. And so uh, evolution, cosmic evolution, 13.7 billion years of it have brought us to creatures who have cosmic and divine imaginations. So how can we harness this great gift of evolution uh, to bootstrap our uh, species beyond self-destruction? That's really <laughs> where we want to take humanity, is beyond this kind of uh, uh, decay and look toward how a planetary civilization is already uh, here in a very nascent form. And uh, I think that the visionary arts are really uh, empowering that um, planetary civilization. And um, I remember uh, uh, one of the wonderful things that Guy uh, said one day when the, I guess, Jehovah's Witnesses came to the door or something like that. And, uh, and he was thinking about it and basically said, art is our religion. And uh, so this was really uh, the same feeling that we had, that uh, creativity and spirituality are one uh, thing. And when we bring these uh, transcriptions of the visionary dimension into uh, the world, then we're bringing heaven to earth. And when you ground something like that, then it's a testament for people for the existence of spirit and for the existence of something beautiful. And uh, that can inspire people and open them up to a new sense of unity and possibility. Thank you for your answer. That was, that well was very, very well said. Um, yeah. Damon, while we've got you here, um, you recently, I'm not recently, but you you begun painting and uh, kind of making a transition from tattooing to painting. Uh, how did you make the transition, yep. and uh, why did you make the choice to start to start painting? Um, I, uh, I I want to do my real painting in my 60s. So uh, the last five years, 100 paintings a year have been devoted to getting uh, to building up a hand or a fluency for the medium, um, and also uh, to uh, to evolve my uh, artwork as a tattooer, but um, but primarily just out of passion. I mean, I've never been able to uh, punch a clock. I have great respect for people who can. I can only work out of passion, not discipline. So uh, so it's exciting for me to uh, to dive into this medium and uh, and and time and time uh, just working out for me. The whole tattoo uh, world seems to be getting into this. I'm really flattered and grateful for uh, people like Chet and Alex Gray as a great leader of his own right and an artist and thinker and all that stuff. And and for us all embracing each other and for you guys to, uh, to it's, it's a really wonderful, magical thing. Um, the excitement I have is hard to crunch into uh, two minutes worth of dialogue, but, uh, but I am a big fan of making a testimony to the supernatural and its existence amongst us and, uh, and excited that we can do that with oil and with elements that are crude and have existed forever. You know, it's, it's fun and it's a wonderful evolution for us to be able to take a part in and maybe help show some other people the path to, uh, and yes, it is already working. It is already lifting people up in our industry massively. You know, the side of the industry, there's the gangster side and the art side, and the art side is growing in strength. And uh, and it's the positive growth is growing out the weeds, if that makes any sense. I love it. 
<laughs> that, that totally makes sense. That that's yes. I I, I was all over the map. I'm sorry. That's uh, no, no. That was that was a really great response. That's that's <laughs> it's. I know. I've personally been really excited about the uh, the more and more art side of uh, the tattoo community lately. It's, it's been uh, it's been amazing. It's, I mean, just just the, the talent that that has been so uh, isolated just in straight up tattooing that's starting to creep out into other mediums. It's just been amazing. It's it's it, and it's really great to see to be able to walk into a gallery and see like brand new artwork that I can really uh, really be inspired by like the, the tattoo artists are creating some amazing work yeah. um, it's amazing what you do with colored grease and hair as tight as sticks <laughs> 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 it's true and, you know we, we haven't progressed far with our with our tools but uh, the uh, the art is, is, is pretty amazing uh, I got a few more questions coming in um, what uh, what impact has furthering your education uh, had on your careers? You know, as art education, uh, just any anything. What is uh, bettering yourself in uh, in education? How what has that done for your careers, um, James? I, I like to, I like to jump in at some point. You can go ahead. No, James, you know what, sorry. Allison? I would love to hear from you right now. You can go first, Alex. Well, I, I just wanted to say briefly that you know, Alex and I, our story as far as education is is quite different. And I think in many ways, you probably mean, you know, it, you know, like continuing your uh, study of drawing and art and technique and things like that. You probably mean that. But for us, I, I like to tell young people that are thinking about whether they want to get a formal education or go off and get their education on their own, you know, like uh, study, at, you know, the, the things that they want to study and do it at the pace and the way they want to do it. I just use us as an example in that I got a higher education and was good in academia and did well and had the support from my family to go ahead and get a, you know, an advanced degree and people would support me then and that worked well for me and I fit well in that system and it has done me a great deal of good. I mean, as I've edited uh, all of Alex's books and all Cosm journals. Now we're working on Cosm journal number eight, and many like infinite interviews and writing, and 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 that's what I do. And it it has really helped me to be a better writer. And structurally, it's just it's a very structural thing to do an education like that. And if you can do it, and it and it seems like the thing that that is natural to you, then I always recommend doing it because there are a lot of benefits to that. Alex, on the other hand, look at how successful he is, and he did not go in that in that route. He started and stopped, and eventually and started again and stopped again, and then eventually realized I can create my own curriculum. I know what I want to do. I know what I want to learn. And our daughter fits into that as well. She, you know, she wanted to go her own way, and she's fabulously creative and very productive and on her own and doing her own thing. And we're extremely proud of her. So, what I what we always say is. Don't use, you know, don't use the story, I didn't get an education and therefore I didn't do all that I could do or I didn't become all that I could be. Instead, use the story that I didn't get an education and look at how great I turned out and I <laughs> did so great. So do that. Just keep that story and make that story real and true like Alex has and like our daughter is doing and other pe many, many other people who don't fit into that academic niche and if academia feels good to you, don't make yourself wrong over it. Just enjoy, savor and have a great time going to those classes and soaking it in like a sponge. And I mean art classes as well because we both met in art school and uh, studied art, you know, to the same degree extensively. I mean, it, it wasn't uh, because I didn't go to figure drawing classes and anatomy classes and all that that I became an abstract artist. I did that too. And it's a great, it's a great thing to get a, an education like that that's well-rounded. So, Yeah. And uh, I would just say that our uh, drawing is something that we continue to push and uh, are, we're always uh, developing a, a, a little new body of, of things you know, uh, with our, our work. So uh, the continuing education of an artist is something that the artist themselves is responsible for. And uh, so 
we've created a number of educational opportunities, uh, you know, at COSM and things, but uh, it always pushes the, uh, the educator as far in the learning environment. And so in, in this uh, context of a kind of continuing education uh, that uh, at Paradise Artist Retreat, you're going to have uh, artists kind of working together and the, in, the collective intelligence there to bring to bear on how to represent something or do something is probably, uh, you know, a pretty unparalleled opportunity, <laughs> actually. Uh, yeah. We got uh, the folks in the chat room have been really happy. Uh, Allison, especially, they uh, we got lots of thank yous for your last response. So, thank you for letting me <laughs> say <course>. it. <laughs> and uh, you know, as we all know, education takes a lot of different forms. It's not just uh, not just formal stuff. You know, I mean, educating is going out and seeing other people's work. Um, you know, it's, I, I think it's important to uh, you know expose yourself to more and more stuff, and I think that can help your career in that way. Um, school. Um, I have a bachelor's in fine arts degree from the School of the Arts of Chicago. Um, but what I found, I got the most out of that, besides a little bit of discipline, although I was not a very disciplined artist when I was a teenager, uh, was just a wider view of what art was about. Taking all the art history classes that I had taken exposed me to many, many artists that I may have never stumbled across on my own. And just having that wider view of art in general has helped my tattooing and my painting, just having absorbed, you know, all the different styles and all the different things you can do to create art, you know, has been very helpful. But it's also important not to let your <coughs> education end at college. You know, you have to continue to learn and push yourself beyond that. If for no other reason, then it makes us happier and more productive to continue to learn fresh water as opposed to stagnant. Right. Uh, who's rocking out? Who's rocking out? Damon, you rocking out? <laughs> rocking out? I don't. I don't know if any rocking out. I mean, maybe a little bit in the background. Yeah, just I every once know. in a while, we get a little blast of music. It's totally fine. <laughs> oh, sorry. I don't uh, know it's, how that it's, happens. It's totally cool, man. <laughs> there are many things I don't know. This is among them. So, uh, <laughs> Damon, what have you got coming up in your life? Uh, what have you got? Any events, uh, projects you're working on? Um, I had an art show uh, Friday. Uh, I'm working on artwork for the Seattle Tattoo Convention at the moment. Uh, thinking about getting a book together to catalog my first 500 paintings in five years. Uh, bent on uh, the influence it's had on my tattooing and trying to inspire people to uh, to to be fresh with multi with a multitude of ideas and that kind of thing. Blah blah blah. And, uh, yeah, just really looking forward to the Paradise Gathering and uh, painting in Hell City and always lots of stuff, you know. I'm a shop owner, painter, tattooer, convention putter on her, blah, blah, blah. So it keeps me busy, and I'm super unorganized. So that, <laughs> I got that going for me. That sounds so familiar. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> so, Chet, you've got, uh, you've got a book that just came out. Uh, how's yeah. That, how's that experience been for you? Uh, maybe... Get a little it's bit of advice to Damon on his book that he might have coming out. Please. <laughs> uh, have uh, uh, Mackie Osborne do the layout for you. That's my <laughs> she did a, an amazing job uh, laying the book out, and it was pretty painless. I just kind of supplied the imagery and, and uh, approved things, but gave him some inspiration. Nice. <laughs> and, um, Bain Art Publishing published the book, and... Mackie Osborne, like I said, did the layout. Uh, that's Buzz Osborne's wife from the Melvins. Oh yeah, man. Know them? Oh nice. Yeah, she does amazing work, and and the book came out so much better than I was hoping for. So it's really, it's really cool. Here's I got a copy right here. Cool. There it is. Yeah, right. it's yeah. <laughs> I just got my uh, I just got my copy in the mail last anyway, last week. It's doing well. People love it. And uh, cool. you're going to be uh, you're going to be doing a signing at the retreat of that same book, yes? Yep. Yep. Perfect. And uh, um, so where can where can folks get a copy uh, of that? We're also there's also uh, this guy Mike Carell's doing a documentary on it. Oh, uh, at uh, on my website at jetzar.com or at lastgasps.com. You can order them there also. Um, 
So you touched a little bit about uh, about Mike uh, making that documentary. I was also going to mention this yeah. guy's doing a documentary on me, and he's going to be at yeah, Mike Carell. He's going to be at the retreat filming for it. So hopefully, I'll get awesome. be able to get interviews with all, all you guys for the documentary. Um, cool. That's, that's going pretty well, I think. Yeah, we'll see. It's all in the editing, I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Alex and Allison, you guys are going to be uh, doing a book signing as well at the retreat. Or oh, show me your book. Come on. All right, we have a new book too called Net of Being. <laughs> that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and so it's the uh, latest of the inner traditions uh, series. And uh, first was in 1990 with Sacred Mirrors, and then 2001 we had Transfigurations. So uh, 2012 uh, brought Net of Being. And uh, so uh, uh, it's, it's been uh, really uh, awesome. We've had a number of openings all over the world actually already, Mexico and Australia and all over the U.S. And uh, so it's done well in a couple of months. There's been 6,500 uh, books sold as Whoa, well. That's nice. Uh, that's good work. That's killer. So yeah. I, that's what it, I just heard from our guy today who came uh, in. So it, it kind of got late in the uh, Christmas season. So people are just starting to see it. And it really is about the uh, integration of the work into the kind of subculture. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, it's including community as a part of the... <laughs> we got a little noise again, I apologize. The phantom music. Well, <laughs> while we have a chance and your attention, I just tell you that we're looking forward to the Bob Soul drawing ritual, which we've also done all over the world, from Moscow to uh, you know uh, Sao Paulo to Mexico all over the U.S. and we're going to be doing uh, that drawing ritual together. It's more a ritual than actually a workshop, so we kind of changed the name. It's it's a it's a it's a meditation around drawing and beauty, the model and chakras and the music that is associated with those chakras. So there's music, there's drawing. And there's sharing in between drawings, but there's this sort of, you know, letting it sort of pour in and pour out on the page to music. And it's just such a beautiful experience. And it's kind of intensive as you go through seven drawings like this. And it, you have to be really committed. And I welcome everybody to, that wants to do it to do the entire journey. It's really, it's really, uh, I don't know, it's sort of, it's a ritual. It's a body thing. It really, it really has an impact. So uh, we... We do it periodically, and we're looking forward to doing the ritual there and other things, meeting with people and uh, probably live painting or something, right? <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> what are you? Definitely. You're going to be doing all kinds of stuff, right? <laughs> um, the exciting thing with you guys again? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so a little bit about uh, we're gonna, uh, the books. Uh, what's the, uh, the process of writing a book? Um, you guys all have a little bit of insight in it. Like, what are the stages and steps that... Uh, Oh, jeez. Well, first... <laughs> no, you don't want to answer that question? <laughs> you have to find the time to do it. <laughs> I think the so to outline what you want to talk about or what you want to show. I suppose uh, if it's just pictures, but there's usually some talk and some writing. So you have to kind of, like, structure it. I'm a structuralist. So, but that's changed. And, and the structure for Net of Being changed repeatedly until like, like how long before it was actually completed? Did you, you came up with the idea of the, of the yeah. first 30 pages? I think it was practically uh, May or uh, May. Uh, I, had, I had a massive reconfiguration uh, of the whole book. It was a, um, a different kind of a book. So there's... 30 pages really before you eat a painting but the first kind of 30 pages are how the paintings have been integrated into the culture uh from an old gnosis magazine cover from but so from, no uh, the first pages are paintings and there's yeah. no writing oh. so yeah. that was a new thing yeah look at this this is this, cool this is, guy. This is guy. <laughs> guys guys speaking in here. of uh 
Hey, I did those three. <laughs> Thank you, James. You see that? Is we did. Oh, did Steve Myers? No, no, no. Steve Myers. This is, no. uh, he did these. Yeah, oh, there's yeah. his brother. His there's brother. The, that one is really. One. I remember yeah. that. Yeah, that's the first Alex Gray tattoo I did. Yeah. In 1999, I think I started that. So, <laughs> part of the structure that really changed. You want to show? And and this was uh, the kind of thing that made us uh, do this because. You can probably not see this, but this guy's looking at the uh, painting, and he's got a tool shirt on. With so, that paint on the painting uh, shirt. Yeah. So there's a reflexive kind of uh, weirdness of this image uh, that tool was so, you know, in a way, it just got it into the minds of a lot of people, and I so I was really incredibly fortunate, and uh, so. This is a, a, a way of looking at uh, community and the way that we, uh, once you have that kind of thematic understanding of what you want to say, the narrative arc of your uh, presentation, then it's kind of like time-based media. It's a lot like first this happens, then this happens, then this happens. And so uh, I, I kind of sequence the book and it goes from a, you know, from a singular to a, a couple, to a family, to a community, to a world. And so a, a, an a opening kind of cosmic embrace uh, to integrate the entire universe flow of evolutionary energy and then bringing it back into the world, into the project that bring it cosm right. of creating sacred space. And so uh, it's, it, the, it goes the journey of the book. And so understanding that journey, then it breaks up into chapters. And uh, then those works get written or you find stuff that you've already written. Well, we wrote a lot of this book on the road. Yeah. We've been traveling so much that we would write parts of it. And it works really well for us to write in short articles, like essays almost. Yeah. So we realized and I think that's where we're going to continue, uh, the way we're going to continue working, because we've been writing a newsletter together for eight years or something. So we've been, you know, learning to write together and uh, write at least little. So sometimes that works for you. You really have to find, I think, your own style. But un but underlying that, like a and think about the structure of the book. You think about it's like a building you have to put the steel up first before you can put the paths in between you so thank you Chick, go for you Chick. sounded like uh, mac really was uh, I, I was that i can't wait to see your book oh what's that? Oh, sorry we lost we lost the just i lost you there for a second, there for a second alex yourself. i can't to see Chet's book and to give him ours. Oh yeah, I got one. I got uh, one you, for you. You're gonna be bringing right. a pile with you to the retreat, <laughs> Chet. Awesome. Yep. Big old pile. So, uh, do you guys uh, <laughs> know what you're gonna be working on when you go to the retreat? You, painting wise, you uh, you, you know uh, you know what you'll be painting and uh, the, the live in the live painting experience and whatnot. Okay. Not, Not yet. yet. No. <laughs> I'm How on. about you, Damon? What are you gonna? What are you looking forward to? Uh, what are you gonna be working on there? I don't know. I want to get a little weirder and more creative. So we'll see how it goes. Well, you'll be surrounded by plenty of weird and creative people. So. I love it. Yeah. Uh, but you. I'm, I'm hoping to have. I'm hoping to have something <laughs> started already, so I can really work on it and not fuck around trying to figure out what I'm doing. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Alex, uh, how about you? What are you going to be working on uh, at the retreat as far as painting? See, we're going somewhere next week, so we're working on that painting right now. We're going to be in costume and Ed Vision, and we're doing painting there, so we're working yeah. on that. And then after that, we'll be thinking about this <laughs> painting. Sure. We'll be thinking about it. It's, it's a flow. You know, it's yeah. a flow. If you're, you know, painting a lot, you, you know. One leads to the next. It's well, I've got a backlog of 
uh, visions, you know, in my journal. And so sometimes I just go back and kind of rifle through the pages and say, oh, yeah, uh -huh. okay, time for you. And so, so uh, I, what's, that, what's yeah. unique about uh, live painting, uh, you know, painting with a, in, in a room full of people as opposed to uh, painting maybe in your studio? Uh, what, what's, what's a unique aspect to that for you? What's, what's it for you? When I say that for me, it is the, <laughs> it is being in a bubble. Nobody can t should talk to me and I shouldn't talk to them usually. Whereas in my life, we're usually, uh, I'm almost never painting without interacting with people. And uh, people are around here all the time where Alex and I are interacting. When you're on stage, you are performing. So you just paint and it's like bliss, you know? You know, just for an hour, just an hour or two, just do nothing but paint. Don't talk, don't, you know, just listen to music. Let the music come in and like get, go out and enjoy, just enjoy. It's the tip of the iceberg for me. I I tend to think of the audience a, uh, and the other painters and everything as it's a collective uh, consciousness experience where the uh, creative energy that's represented by the uh, what the artists are doing, uh, painting and things, it's a, just another form of creative energy. Just as the uh, guitarist might be stroking, stroking and they're bringing something into existence. And so we see how simple it is. You know, it's to do something ourselves. Well, why can't you do that? Well, you can. So it empowers people's creative, uh, you know, wellspring. And, uh, so that, and a lot of artists in mass, I... I'm not sure what this audio is, where this audio is coming from. My apologies. <laughs> uh, this, this, the phantom music keeps creeping into this entire webcast. It's, uh, it's... <laughs> Who's got tunes going? Sounds like Tom Waits. Hey, Damon, is that coming from your shop? I don't think so. I. <laughs> It's cool. I don't think so. It's all right. Um, so we're getting towards the end of our time. Uh, so if uh, I'm, I'm just going to pose the same question to you, uh, Damon, and then James, and then Chet. Uh, it's live painting for you, uh, painting in a group in a room. Uh, how is that different for you than painting alone in your studio? Well, it's uh, not so different for me because I'm never alone in my studio. I, I, it's. <laughs> It's like a tattoo convention here every day, but uh, but it is definitely in the uh, group environment. It's a super conductor of uh, creative energy, and I like to provide energy into that and draw from that as it's going. And I always come up with really unique creative ideas and ways of painting. Uh, so it's really it's exciting. Uh, yeah, it's a mind opener, and uh, and it's just fun. It's a party. I mean, we make art essentially because it's fun. I think, I do at least, and uh, so it's really it's a it's a great time to to learn in a mentally, but also I feel like I learn uh, spiritually or on an energy level. If that makes Definitely. any sense, like I feel like I'm picking up new input that way. Yeah, I agree. You know, I, I don't often paint by myself. I, I try to invite other artists over to my little painting room and, and hang out and paint. And sometimes my girlfriend's in the other end of the room uh, sewing or creating other things with her art. Um, so, and working so many tattoo conventions for so many years, I'm used to creating art in front of an audience. So it doesn't really phase me at all. And I, I can definitely focus uh, very well. And sometimes I even forget everyone else is there if I'm really involved in what I'm doing. <laughs> How about you, Chet? What was the question? Because well, I didn't even I'll hear it. To you again. Uh, <laughs> in a, uh, what's unique about live painting for you as opposed to painting in your safe little studio uh, with your TV? <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I definitely am like a lone painter. I like to be alone. I paint uh, for the most part. I, I enjoy that aspect of it. Uh, kind of. 
solitary aspect of it, but um, it's a nice contrast to go in and paint with other artists. Um, in, in one respect, it was when I first started doing it, it was really a good way to sort of overcome your fear of being up in front of people and having them watch you. Um, having done it quite a few times now, it's like uh, James was saying, it, I don't, it's not a big deal. I don't really think about it. It's, it's, uh, and like Damon was saying, it's, it's all about the fun, you know, it's, it's really, it's really fun. Um, if you get stuck or bored with your piece, you can step away and go look at what other people are doing and get ideas and, very inspirational Inspiration, not even not even so much like you're getting ideas from other it's like you're just I, I just I get inspired when I see other great artwork not inspired to copy it or anything but just inspired to paint so being in that environment is just it's it's amazing I love it I love it it's my only social life pretty much too <laughs> <laughs> it's a cool creative vibe all around you know yeah for sure great I love well it. we are just about out of time we're getting to the end of our uh, a lot of space here I want to thank each and every one of you for uh, giving your time to us and sharing your insights. It's been really great to talk to all of you. Thank you guys for making it happen. Yeah, I'm thanks. really, I'm really looking forward to talking yeah. to all of you guys face to face uh, in New Mexico at the artist retreat. It's it's it's, <laughs> it's going to be see a you good very time. soon. Then, thanks guys. Yeah, thanks. Thanks you guys. And for those of you who are watching on the internet, see you soon. Uh, if you're interested in seeing these folks live as well, you can get tickets to the Paradise Artist Retreat at paradiseartistretreat.com. If you order them today and uh, put in your shirt size, there's a good chance we'll send you a t-shirt and possibly a sweatshirt. Um, this is really a, an event that you don't want to miss if, uh, if you're at all interested in, in art. Um, you can see all these artists on their own websites. Uh, we'll have some of that information for you at uh, tattoonow.com. And uh, you can get in touch with them and see a little bit more about them. Uh, the Artist Retreat next month is going to be amazing. It's going to be a good time. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you for sticking with us at Tattoo Now TV. We hope to bring you a lot more stuff in the future. Uh, we've got Big Gus coming up. Uh, sorry I didn't make it to this show. He's a busy man with the television and all. Uh, we should have him here in a couple weeks. And hopefully we'll get a chance to talk with Jeff when he's back home and uh, not running marathons in New Orleans. Uh, but thank you for being with us and uh, we'll catch up with you soon uh, and as always thanks for watching Tattoo Now TV we'll see you next time <laughs>